Welcome, welcome, welcome. In this video, we're going to discuss recurrence relations. So a warm-up problem for you to think about. It's the carrot cake problem. So it says, how can we cut a cake? So let's think of our cake as like a circular cake. Maybe if you're looking at it from the, the top down, you would see this kind of circular cake. Or if you're looking at it you know, from the side, you would see you know, this three-dimensional cake. And our job with this problem is to make 16 equal pieces using four straight vertical cuts. So equal means that all the pieces have to be exactly the same size. And we're not allowed to swirl our knife around in all sorts of different directions because then you could make infinitely many pieces uh, with just one motion with your knife. But if you just start from the top and chop your way down, then we're going to call that a you know, straight vertical cut. So try to think of how you can do that. We're going to use this problem to introduce recurrence relations. So in five seconds, we'll continue along that train. OK, so what is a recurrence relation? It's an equation that defines a sequence. So when we say sequence, it's just a, a list of numbers in a particular order where each term, so each number in the sequence, is defined as a function of the ones that came before it. The preceding terms are the ones that came before it. So in order to successfully define a recurrence relation, what we have to do is give some initial conditions. We have to give the first term, or sometimes more than one needs to be given. And when we put the initial conditions, together with the function that describes the sequence, then we get a recurrence relation. So the recurrence relations job is to tell us what the sequence is in a nice, concise way. So in example one, we're going to look back to this carrot cake problem, and we're going to find a recurrence relation for the maximum number of pieces of cake that can be obtained using n straight vertical cuts, as it was described in the carrot cake problem. So if we have one cut available to us, we're going to write that as n. So n equals 1, representing the number of cuts. And we'll think of our cut being chopping our cake in half. So now we have two slices of cake, one half and the other. So let's call a sub n, or in this case, a sub 1, equal to 2, representing the number of pieces. So a sub n in general will be this, the maximum number of pieces. So let's keep going. Well, what if we have two cuts? This is a usual approach to trying to define a recurrence relation. You just start in the small case scenarios and you try to look and see what's going on. So a sub 2 gives us 4. So now let's think about a sub 3. What would that equal? So in this case, you have three cuts available to you. Try to think of the maximum number of pieces that you can get. So the idea is by taking the quarters that we got before and stacking them all up and taking one straight vertical cut through the middle, we can double the amount of pieces that we have. So the four that we got in the previous step doubles to eight. So this problem breaks down into a doubling problem. So to get 16, we would again stack them up, chop them vertically, and double again. So to obtain a sub n at each step, to get the maximum number of pieces, we're going to stack up the pieces and make one vertical cut to double the number of pieces. And from here, we can write down what we call a recurrence relation. So our recurrence relation is going to be a description of how to find a sub n from the previous terms. So the idea is to take twice a sub n minus 1. 
Now, in order to successfully define this sequence, we do need to start it off. So we're going to write a sub 1 with one cut. We had two pieces. So this gives us our recurrence relation. Now, one thing to think about when we're trying to find recurrence relations, we have this pattern, if we look above, for a sub 1 and 2 and 3, we got 2, 4, and 8. Then the next number in this sequence is 16, but we do need some further reasoning before we can just say, oh, we multiply by 2, and we multiply by 2, and then we multiply by 2 again to get 16. Although that might work, and it certainly does work in this case, it might not work in other situations. We really need some further logical reason to explain why the next number in this sequence is 16. So to get that next number, what we can do is think about how we stack the pieces, cut them vertically, and the number of pieces doubles. Now, very often it's nice to solve recurrence relations. So we're going to try to solve this particular recurrence relation. Now, what do we mean when we say solve? Well, if you need to find a 100, directly looking at this recurrence relation here, a100 requires a99. So that could be a little bit cumbersome in some cases to find, well, what is a99 in order to give me a100? What a solution to the recurrence relation will do is give us a formula that can directly plug in, let's say, 100 and give you a100. Now, the only method that we're going to be using in these videos is the method of iteration to solve recurrence relations. There are certainly other methods out there. If we run into a situation where we can't solve it by iteration, then uh, we'll, we'll leave that you know, solution alone for a different you know, discovery. But for our purposes, we're just going to need the method of iteration. So what is that? Well, what you do is you write down the first few terms in your sequence. So when you write them down, don't simplify. Just go through the process. So a sub 2 multiplies everything you had before by 2. a sub 3 would multiply everything you had before by 2. It's often easier to see what the pattern is when you don't simplify. So this pattern goes on and on and on. Eventually, we write a sub n. and in this case, we would multiply a whole bunch of 2s. We would be multiplying 2 times 2 times 2. How many times? Well, there would be n such 2s. Because at the third step, there was 3 2s. At the second step, there was 2 2s. At the first step, there was 1 2. And we're always multiplying these 2s together. So at the nth step, there would be n 2s that would be multiplied together. So in the end, the solution to this particular recurrence relation is 2 to the power of n. All right, let's move on to our next problem. So if the idea of moving the cake around was a little bit goofy for you, this problem is a similar style, but a bit more restrictive. So again, we're going to look for the maximum number of pieces that we can make. But this time we're going to work in two dimensions and we're not allowed to you know, move things and stack them up. So we'll picture instead of having you know, a cake, instead of the carrot cake problem, this will be our, our pizza problem. Again, we're going to use uh, straight cuts. You can think of them as vertical. Now, if you're just working in two dimensions, you don't really need to think of your vertical cuts. But if you were you know, chopping up a pizza, we would cut it vertically. And we're not going to be allowed to stack the pieces anymore. Because of this final condition, we cannot move between the cuts. So the pizza is you know, sitting down on our page, let's say right there, from a bird's eye view, and we cannot make any movement of the pieces after we make the cuts. So once again, we'll define our a sub n as the largest number of pieces that we can make, and we'll go through 
the different possibilities. So let's say n is equal to 1. Well, our a sub n that goes with that, our a sub 1, if we make one cut, well, we can make two pieces, just like before. Now, if we say that we have n equal to 2, our a2 value would rely on two cuts. So we can make quarters, just like we did before. So you can get four pieces out of the deal. Now let's try to think about n equal to 3. Now things get a little bit more interesting. So here's our pizza, and we want to know the maximum number of pieces that you can get out of three cuts. That's what a sub 3 would represent. So the maximum number of pieces that you can get with two cuts is 4. So how could we cut this again to get the maximum number of pieces? Well, the idea is to avoid the center here, or avoid an intersection point. So as long as your new cut that you make intersects every line, but not at a previous intersection point. So as we're drawing this line, once we hit this intersection point right here, how about we mark it in blue, because that's kind of a, a key point. So we think about that intersection point, and then we keep drawing our line, and then we make sure that our line hits another new intersection point, which is right there, and then continues on to the end of the circle. So the point here is that every time you make an intersection point, and if we include the line intersecting the circle once, so entering the circle, we don't think about it exiting the circle because after that you're not going to make any more pieces. But every one of those intersection points gives us one more piece. And that's the maximum number of pieces that you can make. So that intersection point crossed into new territory and made this quarter that was one piece before into two pieces now. That intersection point right there made one into two. And the same with this intersection point, it made 1 into 2. So in total, we ended up with 7 as the maximum number of pieces that you can get. Let's do one more example. Let's start by thinking about just the lines. So the idea is to make the maximum number of sections out of our white space on our page the maximum number of sections that we can divide a plane into. So the idea is that every time you draw a line, you want to intersect it with all of the other lines in a new place. So we started with just the cross, and then we drew another line like this, and we got two more intersection points. How about we mark down all of the intersection points? And then with our next line, we just want to make sure that it crosses through all of the other lines in a new place. That will make the maximum number of pieces. So maybe we'll make our next cut something like this. So we get three more intersection points. Notice that every time you draw a new line, you can make one more intersection point than you did previously. So once we have this all drawn out, this represents our case of n equal to 4 with four cuts, the four lines that are there. And we can count, well, what would the maximum number of pieces that we could possibly get with the four cuts be? Well, the idea here is just make sure that you draw your pizza around all of the intersection points. So the pizza is going to end up being something like that. And every new intersection point that was introduced and if we count the intersection point that you know, entered the circle, gives us a new piece. So there would be one, two, three, four new pieces. We had seven previously, and now we have 11. Let's count them. So using this process, we can calculate a sub n. And again, let's write down a little statement that represents how we're finding a sub n, rather than just looking at the numbers. So in summary, when we make that nth cut, like this cut, for example, the fourth cut, we can make at most 
m new intersection points. Now when we say intersection points, we mean intersecting with all the previous cuts, and one for intersecting the circle itself. That would be the maximum number of intersection points that you can make, because that's how many lines and you know, there's a circle out there to intersect with. And this will make the maximum number of pieces, because every time you hit an intersection point, you cross into new territory, cutting an old piece into you know, two new pieces. And you might be nervous about, well, is it always possible to uh, achieve this maximum number of intersection points? Can we always hit uh, all of the lines from before? Well, there is infinitely many different choices for angles on your line, and then you can just you know, push your line up or down so that it always makes new intersection points. So that's not an issue. So therefore, we can conclude that our recurrence relation is a sub n and defined by the previous term, a sub n minus 1. And what we do with that is we add n. So the initial condition that we want, a sub 1 with one cut, we could make two pieces. So this is the recurrence relation. So let's solve this recurrence relation. OK, so iterate. a sub 2, we'll write 2 down on our page, because that's the previous term and we add 2. And then a sub 3, we'll write the previous term down on our page, and then we add 3. a sub 4, remember not to simplify. Instead of writing you know, 2 plus 2 plus 3 is 7, we're just going to leave it as 2 plus 2 plus 3. So 2 plus 2 plus 3, and now we'll add 4. So we'll continue on and on and on, and hopefully at this point you've noticed the pattern. So once we hit a sub n, we have 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot dot dot, and eventually we are going to add on n for the nth step that we just did. And this is very close to, uh, you know, in a previous video we discussed the sum of consecutive uh, integers. And we almost have that here, we just are missing the plus 1. So how about we write the plus 2 at the beginning as 1 plus 1. So now all of this stuff right here is S1, the sum of consecutive integers. So 1 plus S1. Or in terms of n, we can write n multiplied by n plus 1, all divided by 2. So if we want the maximum number of pieces that you can make on 100 cuts on your pizza without moving the pieces, this formula here will give us an instant answer by just plugging in for the value that we want for n. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you on the next one.